We've worked our way through some of the fundamentals with working with CorelDRA in our previous sessions. And in this session, I want to take a look at working with the shape tools in the toolbar in CorelDRA X6. You'll find the shape tools down here. They'll start with the rectangle tool, then you've got the ellipse tool, and beneath that you'll have your polygon tool. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, and we'll just work with the basics of these shapes so that we understand how they work. Whenever I approach a production artwork job, such as a logo trace, a font trace, or even a design job, the first thing I start thinking about in vector is shapes. How can I do this with shapes? Because I found that typically I'm going to be able to work much more quickly with shapes than I can work with the Bezier tool. Let's go ahead and left click with the rectangle tool selected and make a rectangle. And you notice I can make a rectangle of any shape. Got a preview there and when I release I'll have my actual rectangle. You notice that the properties bar changes again. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and create another rectangle. Come over here and click, left click one time, release, left click, hold down. Now I'm going to hold down shift and control and I'll start making a perfect rectangle from the center point. If I hold down just shift, nothing really happens. If I hold down just control, I start creating perfect rectangles from the top or the bottom. If I hold down shift, I start creating from the center point. Go ahead and release and there's our rectangle. Now this rectangle is somewhat interactive and we'll take a look at that. I'm going to go up here to the shape tool which is underneath the pick tool. Click on that. You'll see these nodes appear. These large black nodes and you left click and hold one of these and you'll see that what you're getting is a rounded corner. Now there's some properties associated with this that we can set in the properties bar for the rectangle. Up here we can change our corner to a scallop and you'll notice if I do that and then start to pull back I'll get a scalloped corner. I can change to a camp feared corner like a stop sign there and I can pull back. There's also a setting here called relative corner scaling. If that is turned off and I scale my object my corners are not going to scale with the object. However if that is selected turned on and I scale you can see that my corners scale perfectly with my object even if I go and stretch it out or change the height. Another thing you want to be aware of is if you've got one of these objects and it's converted to curves I'll go to my shape tool you no longer have the interactivity associated with those corners. Now it's just a curve it's no longer a rectangle. I'll hit control Z to go back and now it's back to a rectangle. Change my corners back to rounded as you can see there. So that's the rectangle tool. Let's take a look at the ellipse tool. It's the same. Left click, hold down and you can create any shape. Hold down shift and control you'll create a perfect circle from the center. Hold down control and you'll create the perfect circle from the sides or the bottom or the top. Hold down shift and we'll release here. Once again go back to the shape tool and we'll select this circle. And we can see you've got one node at the bottom. If we start moving that around we'll see that we'll get like a pie shape formed from our graphic as you can see there. I'll hit control Z. So that's basic rectangles and ellipses. Let's take a look at the polygon tool. Very powerful tool in draw. I use it very often left click hold down you can create any shape you want. If you want perfect you can hold down shift and control from the center again or you can hold down control and create based on top, bottom, or side. We'll notice up here in the properties bar that we have five points or sides. I'm going to change that to 15. Just key that in and hit enter. You could also click up and down here or left click hold down and slide up and down and that'll change your numbers or your sides or points. I'm going to go to the shape tool. I'm going to select one node, left click, and start moving that. Now you see all of the stars or points in the polygon move together symmetrically. If I hold down control, I will constrain that to the center point. I'll do the same thing here hold down control and constrain. Now, if I'm creating a starburst for behind a t shirt graphic, I'm probably going to go with the polygon tool. You'll also notice that if I start creating nodes here, I'll go ahead and pull out and I'll take my shape tool and I'll double click here 
and I'll double click again and I'll put like an arrowhead on this and I'll do the same thing on the line that's above here and you'll notice that it's applied to all of the sides or points in the polygon. Once again, if this becomes a curve, you won't have the option to work with it like this, but a very powerful tool, and that's your polygon tool. I use it quite frequently. Go ahead and delete that, and then we'll go ahead and left click here and hold down. We'll see a flyout come out, and here we have the star tool. Now there's some other tools here, but I'm not gonna get into these in this series, only because this is a fundamental series, and I wanna limit the information that we're putting out so that you're not overwhelmed with information. You can start working with the graphics suite after you finish this series. I'm going to release that, take this star. Once again, I can create a five point star, it's set to five points. And I could also hold down shift and control the same way and create it from the center, or just control and that'll create it from the side, bottom, or top. We've got a number of points here. I could make an eight point star, hit enter. We've got a sharpness set at 53. I could change that to, let's say, 65 and hit enter and that will affect that, or I can do that dynamically with the shape tool. We'll zoom in here and take a look. Grab this node and I could pull this in this way. And you notice here, we are constrained. We don't have the liberty that we have with the polygon tool. Go back here and change this to five and hit enter. Now when you're working with shapes, what you want to be aware of is that when you're designing in vector, that often you want to start with a shape as opposed to going to the Bezier tool. And I see so often that designers will start with the freehand tool or the Bezier tool when actually things can be done with shapes. I'll demonstrate that very quickly here. Let's say that I wanted to create a shield for a design. Well, I would start with the polygon tool. First thing I would do is just go ahead and create a polygon, but I would create that as a five point star or a five side, excuse me, polygon. I could mirror that to the top and I already have a basic shield shape here. Now at this point I can convert to curves, go to my shape tool, come here and let's say delete these two nodes and everything will be smooth there. I could come here, lasso these two, click plus, lasso this one here and click plus also. I want to delete that, I don't want that node there. I could come up here pull this up this way, hold down control to constrain the motion of that node, left click, hold down control again, and then I could come in here and drop a node, lasso and delete, that'll curve, drop a node, double click for creating the node, lasso, delete, and that'll create a curve. Now see I've got a basic star, I've got a basic shield, not star, shape laid out here, and I didn't work with the Bezier tool. The next thing I would probably do at this point is start to grab these two points here because they're overlapping. Come up here into my properties bar, reflect nodes horizontally, start pulling out a bit just to change that shape of that shield. And there I've got a basic shield shape set up. Now I could go in and tweak that some more, but you can see how I started with a shape to create my shield instead of working with the Bezier tool. So we want to be thinking about this when we're designing graphics. If I wanted to create, say, a tier shape, well, for a tier, I might start with my ellipse tool. Left click, hold down, create an ellipse, convert that to curves, go to my shape tool, take the top node, pull that up, convert that to a cusp, and then pull this down here, left click, hold, pull that down there, and now I've got a tear shape. If I was gonna make a heart, I could do the same. I'd pull this out wider here, come up here to this particular node. I could left click, pull that down. Probably want to constrain that, but don't have to. Convert that to a cusp, pull out, Pull out with this control arm, and I've got a basic heart shape. Now you see these nodes here are a little bit out of line, but I can lasso these two nodes, come up here into the align nodes, select vertically, select OK, and now my nodes are aligned. Now when I did that, I'm going to hit control Z. We went the wrong way. I want to go, the last node selected will be the node that we align to. So I'm going to select the bottom node, come up here, hold down shift, select the center node, up here to align, 
select vertically, select OK, and now that's centered on the bottom. It's not quite so lopsided because we centered to this node here last. Now I can see there's some off balance in my shape here, and that's because my control arms are in different positions. But I can pull this control arm out and take a look down here, and we can see that we need to have this control arm perhaps a little bit closer down there. And yet, here we have a perfect heart shape. Now this is very basic shapes, but yet when we start to do the actual design work, we want to be aware of the fact that you can very often start with a foundation of one of the interactive shapes in draw your ellipse, your rectangle, your polygons, and then move from there to more complex shapes that you can form by working with your nodes and lines. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.